Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming Database and our weekly roundup of all the relevant blockchain gaming news. Um, make sure you check out our website, blockchaingamer.biz, follow us on Twitter, BCGBiz, and connect with us on LinkedIn, Blockchain Gamer Database. Today is Friday, the 6th of October, and I'm your host, Jenna Jordan, and with me is co host, John Jordan. Hello, John. How are you? Hello, how are you doing? Good, good. Rocking my Mojo Melee yes, cap today. Yes, sir. Seeing as it's the kickoff of Harvest of Doom. Harvest of Doom. Yes, yeah. yes. We're looking forward to that. Six hours time. So, so we uh, got the, the, uh, the season, new mojos, new quests, it, new champion, two. Rackmore, Podden. It's season two now, isn't it? I can't remember if they had a season zero or season one. But anyway, so the third season, I think. Yeah. I, I am a little bit confused about this with seasons. And so like, yeah. you know, it was like season zero seems to be soft launch, but then yeah. it's not always. And season one, that's the proper yeah. launch of a game, but not always. <laughs> so no, I don't know. We're into a new no, season. It definitely Talking is season, about seasons, yes. Axie Infinity actually this week launched uh, season six, I think, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And with that um it's not just new rewards and and you know new quests and so on so on new leaderboards but they have launched launched what is effectively a battle pass for holders of axes can you tell us a bit more about that because you've been looking into that haven't you uh yes yes so as you said <laughs> yeah season six for axie <laughs> um so i mean they've been it's, it's interesting actually because it's sort of you know every Normally, when you run a season, you're sort of, it's sort of, so, you know, some new characters and some sort of new reward structure, and you know, you don't really do a lot of fundamental changes to the game. Whereas, you know, I guess it's sort of actually sort of more than most blockchain games companies still sort of building, building the airplane in flight or, or refining the airplane while in flight. So that every time they do like a new season, they do actually do some quite um, sort of big changes to, to some of the stuff. I mean, in this case. Yeah um they've done some onboarding changes so make it easier for um for new players so they've done sort of a, a streamline of the tutorial and the onboarding um it may not sound like very much they've also changed the time to 40 is it 45 seconds 45 now, seconds but, yeah, yeah which is you know for people who are really playing the game sort of might notice that as quite a sort of big change i don't know um but it's sort of interesting that they you know they really are sort of working hard on, on sort of finessing that in terms of the sort of battle pass thing what they've done now is and this is going to be a long-term trend, is if you own a um, some of the rarer axes, so the rarest ones are called mythic um, mystics. There's about a thousand of those. There's about 11 million axes at the moment. At the moment and there's a hard cap on these mystics. I think it's about, I can't remember, 1,048 or something, I can't remember. Um, so, so they're the rarest ones. Um, and then you have origin ones. There are about 4,000 of those. Um, and then they have these various other ones, these Japanese ones, the Japanese sort of... Um, Sort of mm. parts, and so is it, uh, then there's neat, uh, ones called. I can't remember what they're called, but anyway, there's there's some sort of old ones that they did from some, some special axes that they did from you know from, from the early days, which don't really give you any um, sort of advantages in compared to you know in, in the battle. So the, with axe, it's sort of about you know building your deck and having sort of good supporting axes, depending on you know what, what your sort of how you want to play the game. So even though Mystic Axes are still worth five thousand dollars, whatever, they don't give you any advantage in game because that's pay for win, pay to win, and people don't sort of like that. So they've always had this sort of tension, really, that they have these things that are very rare in terms of there's not many of them, but they don't really, they can't really give you advantage in games, in terms of you know if you're just playing someone. So they're trying to think of ways of sort of giving, creating some um, you know uh, non-gameplay advantage. So so basically, if you have some of these axes now, you you sort of have your own sort of a, a leaderboard so so it's not it's not a leaderboard really but it's so there's a leaderboard for every player but it but axi players if they get to certain levels get extra rewards uh, mystic holders or, or origin holders or all that sort of stuff so it's sort of like a secondary um uh, sort of incentivization for for, for players so I, i'm not sure calling it a battle pass is is what i would have done um um but i suppose in a sense they're thinking if you own one of these it's like you've got your own premium sort of battle pass which is just for you i mean and to, to be to be honest you know i don't know how easy it is for these holders to actually earn these rewards because you have to be in certain sort of sort of um you know positions in the leaderboard over a, the whole thing runs call it like tiger tiger something right? yeah tiger it's like 49 ones. days so so you so i mean i guess this goes back to they don't just want to be giving away loads of stuff to people who own these things 
you know, which is everything, you know, everything in blockchain is sort of moving towards, you don't just passively get stuff for owning stuff because that, you know, potentially means your security, you know, security when the SEC sue people for selling securities, yeah. a security means right. you own something, you don't do anything and you get paid money. Um, so with all these sort of things, what they're sort of doing now is all these blockchain games are going, you know, you can own these things, that's good, but then you have to show skill. And if you show skill, owning a rare, a rare thing will give you better rewards than not owning it. But it's not just like, you know, you sit there and you get an airdrop every month. Because then, Trying yeah, to encourage, see. encourage yeah. more gameplay and sort of engagement in the ecosystem and yeah, yeah, the yeah, community. Yeah. Yeah, so um, we'll see how that goes. I mean, it's still the case with Axie. I did, I did the most popular, uh, my monthly sort of look at what was going on in terms of on-chain activity. And Axie is still, you know, obviously miles, miles off where it was, but it's, you know, it's still around about the 15,000 sort of daily active unique wallets, which is, you know, puts it, you know, in, in the top 10 blockchain games, but not in the top five, you know. So so they are still got a long way to go um, in terms of that game. I think their focus now is, I mean, I've been playing a lot of Axie Homeland, which is the sort of um, resource land farming game which yeah. you need a uh, land nft to but you need to own a land nft in order to play that game but then there's no other nfts in there and you can sort of but you can sort of see they're sort of trying to build out you know a, a, a bigger game so actually infinity origins which is the you know the, the the battler game will become you know a part of a much broader selection of games mm -mm. and with it being um New month, we've also looked at new games that were added to the big blockchain game list, mm. which has now gone over 1,000 games that are either live or in development. And this month, the uh, Ton blockchain came out on top with yep. 21, 29 even uh, live yeah. titles mm. that are uh, running on the Telegram technology sort of... Well, uh, yeah. Technically. <laughs> so... <laughs> I've been looking. I've been looking at this quite a lot actually um, over the last sort of couple of weeks. So, so um, yeah. So, so the I can't remember sense for a ton actually. Ton is a, a um, uh, what's it called? A you know a um, acronym. Um, the the open network. I think it's called Ton. So Tom Tom was originally done by Telegram back in the back in the ICO days, and they sold a billion dollars of tokens or something. I can't remember um, to people. Telegram sold these tokens to build this blockchain, and the SEC said no, it's security, <laughs> um, and so um, Telegram had to give all the money back um, and pay a small fine. Uh, but but uh, Telegram, being quite a sort of punchy company, they just said, well, we're going to open source it. So the impression I get is the people in Telegram who were working on Ton just basically left Telegram and basically did it as an open source project. Um, and now now all the sort of um, and the token's been launched, you know, for, for, you know. Uh, ages ago um and, and but now they're sort of coming back and just integrating the ton blockchain into telegram which is where where it would have ended up you know if the sec hadn't have stepped in and the interesting thing here is um that telegram is a like, massive um you know messaging system it's you know it's quoted 800 million sort of users i don't know how how active you know all those users are but even if it's you know a quarter of that there's still 200 million sort of you know monthly active users Mm. And now that they have literally a crypto wallet built into every account. <laughs> so if you have a um, a Telegram account, um, there is a basically a custodial wallet. So that means you don't own the keys. Um, but basically, you can send crypto, Bitcoin, Tom, um, a Tether, or the, or the, or the um, and, and a, a USDC are the tokens, cryptocurrency they support. But you can send anyone who has a Telegram account crypto. Um, just using their, um, you know, using your your their contact details, generally their wallet account. Uh, and they also have this other thing called Ton Spaces, which is a more, which is a um, a more sort of fully featured crypto account that you can have the keys on, so you get a seed phrase for it. Um, and for that, you can have NFTs and um, you know sort of more functionality and stuff. So you can just really see, uh, you know, how how it plays out. I'm not 100 percent sure, but. Lots of people have said, well, wouldn't it be great to have like, you know, you know, Facebook or Twitter with crypto? Well, <laughs> that's sort of that's what Telegram is. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously retrospectively fitting crypto into these into these systems is how you're going to grow a sort of crypto, you know, a mass market crypto social network. And we'll see, you know, it looks like Twitter is looking at something sort of similar. Um, but, you know, Telegram is, is a long way ahead. Mm -hmm. As for the games, it's, you know, it's, you know, I've been playing a few of them. You know, they they tend to be sort of bot-based sort of text games. So I'm playing this sort of Tamagotchi one, 
where you sort of you know you sort of have this tamagotchi and you sort of feed it and make it get in the toilet and you can train it up and stuff and um and there's some sort of battling games there's other ones where you sort of link out and go to a, a sort of web page and play sort of simple games on that so they're not you know you're not gonna play a 3d shooter um through through these at the moment um yeah. but i think i think these sort of text games can be quite compelling i sent you a um a uh, request to play battleships yesterday which you haven't replied to on telegram i did reply i did, I did you reply to it yeah. okay yeah, so yeah, i have to check that oh so, have you oh my... so i i stand yeah. corrected you, yeah. you sunk my battleship already i didn't know it's, it's pearl harbor <laughs> all over again um so, so those sort of things can be you know they clearly those are games they're you know and, and i think that those sort of games with with sort of um you know tokens built into the more nfts and stuff you know it'll be a different sort of game but personally i'm sort of quite interested in that yeah so i think we'll be the big list will be adding a lot more um games on the, on mm. the ton blockchain now this this is quite interesting because you know recently or over the last year however you want to call that recent or not <laughs> there's been this sort of notion that everyone now just takes for granted gameplay first gameplay for the fun and immersive and, yeah. and all these sort of things that has yeah. to be this thing if you don't yeah. have that you're never going to succeed sort of thing yeah. and then actually some people have said no value first mm. it's the value we have to draw draw gamers on other sort of values than the gameplay because otherwise why wouldn't they just stay with wave two games yeah. um so no looking at these ton games from what I've seen, sort of first impression, not the deepest, not the most sort of, you know, engaging mm. perhaps, but it offers something different, doesn't it? And mm. that's what we've also been looking into in, in terms of these um, fully on-chain games, which we'll get onto later. Mm. You know, these, it's very early on in, in, in their development, and but they're offering something new, aren't they? And yep. a different sort of deeper sense of value than just the gameplay hmm. um, what's your take on that john yeah no i mean i think i mean every you know every game that's wants to use blockchain will sort of have a slightly different sort of formulation of how it wants to use blockchain you know everything from as you say the sort of fully on chain games which i think you know both me and you are sort of intellectually more interested in um <laughs> uh, uh, but obviously a sort of uh from a accessibility point of view are harder to get people into them i mean there's, there's loads of on-chain games we couldn't play because we're not sort of coding you know, um, in, in uh, whatever you know, whatever language it is that you sort of need to, to do. Um, so you can sort of see why a lot of a lot, a lot of the sort of um, sort of trend over the last year has been, you know, whatever you call them, Web two point five games or Web two point one games. You know, sort of terms being used like that, um, which is sort of like, well, it's a it's a game. You know, people don't need to know it's a blockchain game; they just sort of sort of own some stuff, and, and, and you know, that's sort of fine. And I don't think either of those approaches are wrong. Um, it depends sort of what you want to do. Um, but for me, yeah, I sort of conceptually, you know, one of the strongest questions, one of the strongest criticisms, I suppose, of blockchain games so far is, you know, you're not making games, you're not, you know, you're not making games that you couldn't make without blockchain. So you're sort of like forcing blockchain into these games. Um, now, personally, I disagree with that argument, but I think conceptually, you know, it's, it's actually, a, you know, a fairly sort of strong argument with, with any new technology. And you sort of ha had this, you know, when the iPhone came in, people were sort of porting, um, you know, uh, 3DS games, because they sort of, you know, oh, it's a little screen and it's on the go, portable sort of thing. But, you know, mobile took off when a totally different sort of game came in that was free to play sort of games where, you, you know, they were sort of, you you didn't sit there and play for an hour, you sort of sat there and did like five minutes of stuff and then you came back later and, you know, you had these sort of snackable sort, sort of things. So those were the games that really worked. Um, and so I do sort of think no matter what happens in the short term and medium term, in the long term, as the technology gets better, and all these L2s and L3s or whatever, you know, these fast blockchains come in, you 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 will sort of end up with, if you believe in blockchain, putting everything on the blockchain. <laughs> because at that point, you know, that, that, that's the point. That the, the, you know, that the stuff is, you don't, you don't have any server costs, you're running it all on the blockchain. Everything is there, so, play, so players can sort of swap it around. People can build. You know, there's a lot of talk about composability again. When I was talking to Michael Wagner from um, Star Atlas. They just launched their... Um, say, certain Sage uh, Labs economic simulator. It's not a great looking game at all, um, but it's a fully on chain game on Solana, doing you know, saying a million transactions um, a, a day now. Um, and yeah, you you play it, and it's sort of graphically terrible. You know, you basically every you basically you know you 
I can't say that. No, 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 but they know that. You know, this is, you know, but you get your you get your ships, you send them on a mission, you have to you have to put them into warp, you have to take them out of warp, you have to start them mining, you have to stop them mining, you have to You even take... lost your ships, didn't you? And I I've no even lost one of my ships somewhere. Gone. I'm not quite, I'm <laughs> That's quite sure. The experience for you, isn't it? <laughs> I've I've docked it at a space station and I don't know where it is anymore. Um but I mean <laughs> anyway, so, I mean, so, but, but but the whole point of, of, of you know of that is it, he's saying and, and and um you know they've they've announced they um you know they've opened they've a certain set of tools have now been released for that game. So, you know, I'm not technical enough to know, you know, what a what a um, IDL linker is or whatever. But you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff now that you can access if you're a coder, and you can build you build your own front end. So someone could build a front end that would tell me, you know, where my ship was because <laughs> you know, my ship is an NFT on the Solana blockchain. It's in a wallet, you know, it's, it's in a space station wallet or somewhere um, because all the all the things are, you know, their wallets and you know, uh, yeah, um, Solana addresses at least. So then that's the whole whole point. That stuff stuff's really hard to get going. It's you know because it's call it sort of the, the cold start problem. You have this sort of tech, but no one's using it, so no one's sort of interested in it. But you know, there's lots of people do, you know having that sort of approach. And I think to me, mm -hmm. that is that is more fascinating than making a first person shooter where the guns are NFTs. Although some people might like that as well. Good. Good. Let's move on. So we've. Yeah, we've just covered the Star Atlas uh, news that in other news, we've been looking at Splinterlands, which has uh, announced, it's actually last week they announced it, um, that they are doing a major restructure of the company mm. and they, well, they're actually spinning out to two companies, which one will be Splinterlands and the uh, Tower Defense uh, mm. Soul Keep, and one will work on this Genesis League sports the other game yeah. and the Invenium platform yeah. <clears throat> and they're also um, cutting down staff uh, significantly and so it, it sort of follows a little bit the star atlas what star atlas was doing hasn't it previously <laughs> uh, well you not quite not quite the same scale i don't think splinterlands ever had 200 no no people, but, um yeah it's, i mean it's a similar thing i mean you know we don't really we don't cover non-blockchain games but you know this week has been a, a lot of the last couple of weeks has been you know just on, in the normal games industry you know uh, epics got rid of 800 people um the last of us developer naughty dogs got rid of a bunch of people i mean just yeah every every developer is basically looking at his head count again with mm. people because you know and this is nothing to do with games in particular this is because interest rates are now five percent and people generally the market consensus is interest rates are going to stay at five percent for the rest for the rest of 2024 really um you know maybe even go up another thing so so basically money has got more expensive so you know people are people you know companies may have debts that they have to pay back so that's gonna get more expensive and they just want to sort of make sure they've got they're using their as much you know using their money as efficiently as possible so you know it's nothing particularly the Splinterlands has done although obviously crypto you know companies have been particularly sort of badly hit because crypto prices have gone down a lot more you know um compared to I mean, fiat prices don't go down that one. But anyway, crypto's been hit more. So this is a second sort of cutback to Splinterlands. And I think more fundamentally, what tends to happen when in, in good times, companies get a bit sort of, I'm not saying they're sort of carried away, but they sort of, you know, they they, they feel like we can do a lot. So Splinterlands was going really well, say, a year ago. Um, and they had, you know, they had their land sale and we're going to build that out. And they sold it, they was, you know, selling out of their latest card collection. So everything seemed really good. And they're like, what can we do next? How can, you know, how, how can we expand the company? And they, we're really good at trading card games. Um, but Splinterlands is sort of like a, you know, a weird fantasy IP. Let's do like a mass market IP um, sport. So, so they did a deal with um, uh, the American Football League, Soccer League. Um, and they're basically making a, you know, a sort of a, a, a trading card game using American you know, football uh, players. Um, and they really felt that was going to, you know, that would give them the potential to get, you know, millions of players because people in America, you know, football's a big growing thing sort of thing. Um, but obviously what happens to agree is, is the sort of company sort of focus is like shifts away from your sort of core product because like that's doing great. We don't need to focus on that and all this cool stuff's happening um, and they're building an infrastructure platform. So they run on, they run on Hive, which is effectively their own blockchain and they're, they're sort of building out sort of tool, tooling around that so they can do more games and maybe sort of have you know other developers can come on and, and do that as well so so i think sort of internally in the company you know even when it was at its biggest it was still a fairly small company um it's all bootstrap company um there was there was probably a bit of 
cognitive um, um, sort of uh, confusion going on there. So what they've, so I guess the most important thing they've done in this reorganisation is they split the company as you say into two. So there's a holding company which owns those two companies. They're not, they're not sep- they are separate companies, but they're still owned by this sort of the company that started Twinslands called Steam Steam Monsters. And the two the two founders, um, I think it's is it Matthew or Michael and um, Jesse. Yeah. So 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 Jesse's focused on the soccer game and the blockchain infrastructure part. And the other guy, whose name um, I, I forget, is focused on Splinterlands. So now you sort of have the, you know, the two sort of you know main people in the company can run their own bits that they want to. Um, so Jesse's not going to tell, going to get be involved in Splinterlands, you know, unless they ask him to be, obviously. Um, and and he can just you know go off and run his, his side of the business. And I think you know that that um, that'll be good for Splinterlands. They've got a new card. Um, uh, sort of drop coming out, and they've been doing some sort of um, talking around how they're going to run that, and how the sort of money's going to flow between them and the DAO for the for Spinterlands, and how they sort of apologise for not uh, being on the ball in terms of I think it's mainly the land. So this land has been out for a couple of years, and nothing's really happened um, in in comparison to Axie. I mean, Axie NFT land of NFTs has been out for a lot longer, but now you have this whole game homeland that you can play if you have a land nft and, and sprintlands hasn't got to that stage yet and that's, that's clearly yeah, you know yeah. where it wants to go so so you know few resources obviously sacking people is never great you can never you know you you lose capacity in that way um but it's sort of you know you, you in a year's time you know you sort of go well that was the right decision the problem i think for companies is they always make these decisions sort of slightly too late so they probably could have made this decision three months ago but you always sort of hope something's gonna get better crypto prices are going to go up you know, I think I think that the hardest thing for any business is 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 to be sort of cutting um, yeah. uh, stuff. I think that's you like a general the last minute, human you know? problem, isn't it? You, you get attached to things. This is like a love project for many of these developers. Yeah, no, and, and, and when you're working you with people, don't want to let players down. Yeah. No, exactly, you know, exactly. Like and, attacking people, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but anyway, I mean, that's but that's sort of the, how business works. And, I mean, obviously, again, the last thing you want to do is be sacking people in. November because that's yeah. <laughs> before Christmas is is really yeah. the worst. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's right. Looking at a bit more positive things <laughs> or games launches, the um, eco labels kind of farming game, big one on Flow has launched seeds, and we got some titles coming up from the game Dozy, which is line next sort of Web three platform. Yeah. Uh, Sweet Monster Guardians and. Uh, they're also working on their own sort of a native TCG project, GD, because yep. GD game does it, yeah. Mm. Uh, that will uh, come out on the 19th this month. Well, it's a uh, alpha test, I think. Alpha, oh, is it? Sorry. Yeah, it's not. It's the game, yes, game. yes, you're right. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good, good uh, point. And then Nitro Nation. Uh, yeah. Well, Nitro Nation, funnily, <laughs> is kind of launched in August, uh, season zero or soft launch, whichever. But when it launched, um, I downloaded it to my mobile and I could never get it to load. I, mm. I just, you know, tried maybe once a week to get into the game because I've really been sort of eager to try out this game and just never gotten it to work. And mm. now they've launched season one. Um, and finally, I can get it to work. So last night was my first go mm. at Nitro Nation World Tour from Creative Mobile and Mythical. And uh, yeah, it's good, good so far. It's not sort of really deep gameplay, really. It's more about your inventory and crafting, upgrading your cars in the workshops and mm. starting social clubs for a non-car fanatic like me. Yeah. It'll be interested to see how long I stay with the game. But yeah, you were quite enthusiastic. You, know, you, play, you played it a bit more, haven't you, John? Um, yeah, so as you, as you say, it sort of it came out, I played it quite a bit when it came, first came out in August. Um, I've not played it um, recently, actually, um, so I need to sort of get back into it. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, that drag racing franchise, Creative Mo- Mobile have been making those games for 15 years or so, so they absolutely know how to make how to make them. Um, the NFTs, are, I guess, you know, going back to uh, Web 2.5, yeah, you don't need to own any NFTs, so you can just play with the cars and buy in-app purchase cars. Um, you can buy clearly NFTs as well, so the, so the sort of rarest cars are, are NFTs. And I guess the interesting bit here is you can own... Um, they call them workshops, so basically garages, um, and effectively that's the guild system. So 
very early in the game, actually, I was quite surprised how early. If you, you basically can't level up your car anymore, you have to join, what do they call them? They call them clubs, yeah. You have to join a club and get access to their workshops to level up your cars and there's tuning things and, and rental and all that sort of stuff. But, but, but the basic sort of thing is just, just upgrading your cars. Mm. Um, uh, so no one has to own an the only person who has to own an NFT is the club creator. So you can't create a guild or a club unless you have an NFT of, of a workshop. So that's sort of quite a nice way of doing it, that the the NFT holders are sort of providing functionality in the game for people who don't know anything about it or, or you know, yeah. are, not, are not spending any money. Mm. Um, I've not really got to the stage yet of um, seeing what benefit you get in game from being a NFT holder, uh, you know, a club creator. So in, in uh, NFL Rivals, they have a sort of similar system with their, with their helmets. And the the sort of um, the hel- the I can't remember what they call them in there, in there um, what they they yeah, like guild systems called there but but if you own an NFT you sort of get some rewards de- um, in game rewards depending on the activity of the of your um, guild and where they place on the leaderboard so I assume it's something like that um, so you know mythical games is very much following the same sort of um, playbook with the app stores that they have done with NFL rivals in terms of you know what what um, app stores allow them to do. Um, so we'll sort of keep an eye on that one. Um, my sort of gut feeling is that uh, Nitro Nations w- would probably be more successful than NFL Rivals, just because I think probably cars are a bigger, have a bigger appeal than American football, which is obviously a big thing, sport, but not so big globally. Um, so I think sort of brands like, um, the, yeah. so the launch, they launched with Dead Mouse, who's the uh, sort of um, you know musician guy who's really into crypto. He's launching his world tour as well so he, he's there's a special sort of mission and a special car that you can win um from him and they're also i think launched with mclaren the you know the, the one of the big sort of uk car manufacturers for sports yeah. cars and stuff. so yeah. it's just those sort of the brands they've got in there you know i'm not a big petrol head either but you know they've got all the sort of lotus and all the not all of them but certainly you know a large number of big brands in there so you can sort of see and we just know those drag racing games do you know, tens of millions of downloads um so so it, like all these things it'll take it won't be like a massive big hit, I don't think, sort of overnight. Um, the sort of mythical will have to feel feel their way a little bit how to bring the NFTs in there. Um, but yeah, good to see it live. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think we're running out of time, so we're going to close for this week. But okay. uh, thank you very much for listening, watching, whichever, and we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.